honest to be type video and this one's a little bit different insofar as it's part two of the SLC9 uh, video recorder series uh, on this particular machine and uh, you might remember that uh, we had fast running servo head servo issues which turned out to be an open circuit coil pickup coil uh, actually on the lower head drum so I swapped out the head drum I uh, got terribly confused for some reason I don't know why uh, because it's a, a later style of head drum but hey ho um, and uh, yeah the deck I took this from the replacement lower drum had a fault uh, that basically was bad heads and um, I would pretty much I mean I didn't test it that much because it's quite a shabby machine so I thought well I need the spares for other machines anyway at the time so I scrapped this um, thinking that the heads were bad uh, so what with everything else it was more more worth it as a, as a spares deck but when I was finishing off the um, part one it suddenly dawned on me it's doing exactly the same thing in this machine as it did with that machine and I'm wondering if there is actually a problem with the probably with the transformers the uh, the, the coils that basically transfer the, the video head um, um, the signal from the, the upper moving rotating part of the heads to the fixed lower section of the in the lower head drum so yeah so i did think about doing this as, a, as an update but to be honest i think this is going to be so much fun <laughs> it actually warrants its own video so uh let's just remind ourselves what what the uh, issue is uh, press play and you can see there we've got a very snowy picture. Um, I've actually turned the PCM switch off. So that's with the PCM, um, PCM disengaged, if you like. So normal video recorder operation. Um, and it puts, puts a dropout compensator on basically, but obviously because one of the heads is essentially not sending anything it's blanking so if we put it on to PCM cutting out the dropout compensator you can see that it is pretty much one head that just is not picking up anything so it would seem but if I press pause um, that's actually not the best image to be on but you can see the, the stills head and the other head are fine. Now the other thing that's odd about this is I was sort of watching it after, um, after I'd recorded part one and occasionally I get a perfect picture uh, in play it will suddenly just appear perfect, perfectly clear, just for a split second, and then go back to this, which does make me think that I've got some sort of problem with the with those coils, or with the um, the, the wires up from them. It's all part of the coil anyway, but wires up to them uh, from them to the to the solder um, pads. So let's investigate. Okay, so um, let's take this upper drum off. Power's off, of course. Okay, so that's out. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have to take off this as well. I don't know why I didn't do that first really. I suppose it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a 
a first test. I don't think I'm going to get an awful lot out of this, but I'm just going to measure the resistance um, across each connected head to see what, what that brings back. I have to say, I don't know what I'm expecting here. Yeah. So they're all dead, pretty much dead shorts, which is good. That's consistent. I thought it would be low ohms, um, but yeah, pretty much just dead shorts. Um, now, what are heads? I've got a head disc up here, so let's just, out of interest, see what these these heads actually measure. So yeah, so those actually measure two ohms. Um, let's just measure these. Uh, this is from I think an SL HF. 150, 1 1.8 ohms, so it's about 2 ohms, so okay, so that's fine, so that does sort of suggest that the, the coils are fine, um, because the coils are lower resistance, must be lower resistance than the actual um, heads themselves. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is actually test the heads themselves with the head uh, test meter. Now that has been playing up, which doesn't help. It doesn't give consistent results all the time. Um, but at least you know um, when it isn't because it, it just goes haywire. So it's not like it's going to give me uh, false readings as such. I'll, I'll know if it's not um, not behaving. So I think we're up to temperature. And the iron might be, but the tip isn't. Okay, so on the first um, single head, uh, we have a reading of five and good head. Now, this is a VHS tester, but that I know is good. That is good on these heads, um, only because I've compared them with a brand new old stock set of heads. So I know that's good. So let's test the next one. So I think this is the other playhead, which is four, which is still good, uh, a little bit lower, but that's good. So now on to the next head. This is a bit odd. Just checked this here, uh, this head, and this appears to be open circuits. And uh, that would explain quite a lot. <laughs> uh, maybe that is the head for playback and the other one is the still one. I don't know. I don't know which way, way round it goes. Um, and I'm not sure it's actually detailed or documented anywhere specifically which way round these head chips go and the cables go. So yeah, that's something I need to investigate, I think, and uh, maybe whip the heads off and uh, have a look. Head disc is off and um... I can't see any issue with this at all. Um, hoping that camera will keep in focus. I'm actually doing this in a slightly odd way. Um, the chip looks absolutely fine. The coil looks absolutely fine as well. You can actually see the windings um, on it. And uh, but checking the the two uh, wires which are on the left of this image, um, it is indeed open circuit. The, the, that, that copper-coloured 
coil is open circuit, and that is the main head. So the green colored um, uh, copper you can see on the right, that is actually for the still. And uh, of course that checks fine. But yeah, I've got an open circuit head and there's no damage to it at all. Um, I mean, the, 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 there is, you can't really see it on here, but there is actually a, a layer of, uh, I suppose you'd say epoxy, but it's some sort of resin glue that is coating uh, all the copper. And that is perfect. The chip is perfect. Everything about this is perfect. It's just open circuits. Uh, I've even checked from the, the actual copper, um, sorry, from the solder joints that you can see there. Uh, there's a little bit exposed. They are covered in, in the epoxy, but um, the, the solder is actually uh, accessible. And it is, it's completely open circuit. I just can't believe it, to be honest. It's so, so bizarre. But uh, yeah, I suppose all we can do is change the head and uh, take it from there. Donut machine. And as you can see, it's been fairly well liberated of several boards. Uh, I think this machine was actually okay. Uh, but uh, it had problems with the power supply and there was something else with it as well. Um, front loading system was bad and a couple of other issues with it. And um, yeah, I think it was damaged as well. Looking at that, it was damaged in the post. But uh, yeah, I believe the heads are good. So uh, I'm going to take these off and transfer them over and we'll give it a test. New heads are on, so let's get the upper drum back on and give it a test. So there we have it. Uh, it does really, it does throw you when it looks like the heads are running slow, but uh, believe me, they are running at the right speed. So with the replacement heads, we are fine. Uh, just checking the tracking. Tracking is actually really good. So that's good. Um, I think these heads are actually in really great condition. Uh, from what I remember from the old machine, uh, I do make a note if they're poor um, and test bad, but these these had no note uh, regarding, regarding bad heads, so uh, they should be good. And still is really good as well. So yeah, really pleased with that. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to cut to a couple of updates. Uh, I wasn't going to make this an update video, but uh, as we're a little bit uh, short on this one, I thought it'd be quite nice just to update you on uh, a couple of the other machines that uh, I've repaired, but subsequently found other faults with uh, during their testing uh, period. So uh, yeah, let's cut to that. So a couple of things I missed with the uh, C6 in the uh, video series I did about it. Uh, first of all was the alignment of the lacing ring um, assembly. Basically, you can slacken off this screw here and then slacken off this one here and adjust how tight um, this gear, this whole assembly um, actually is. And how I did it was just to make sure that there wasn't, there was a bit of play, but not too much play, and that these two um, um, friction uh, gears are basically fairly equal. I mean, at the moment it's in um, uh, eject position. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's how I did it. Um, I did have a look in the manual. I couldn't really find much information on the manual, a manual I have anyway, on uh, how to do it. So uh, yeah, that was a bit, uh, a bit annoying, but uh, it seems fine. It works fine. If you get it too far the wrong way, um, this one will start making an odd noise. Too far the other way, this one will, and you, you'll hear it strain. So uh, yeah, that's, um, 
that was that. And the other thing I had, uh, I was testing it, giving it a soak test, it's working absolutely brilliantly. But what I was finding was Rewind was intermittently not working. And it really threw me because obviously it's it's had the new idler tire and um, it's plenty of talk there. This is clean as well. Everything's clean. And what I found is I'd actually missed this spring here. Um, well, I knocked it off, basically. And what that causes um, to happen is this assembly here will intermittently get the wrong side of this and it will cause the arm to um, not, I don't know whether I can get it to move, probably not, um, to not actually locate properly between this idler and the reel. So yeah, that was a bit, bit of an odd one, but uh, yeah, I got it sorted and it, it seems to be fine. There is plenty of torque there. Uh, the other thing as well that's worth knowing is you can actually test these units by taking the front loading system out, leaving it connected or reconnect it with it upside down. And you can actually load a tape, which is quite handy. So you see there the rewind is, is much better. It's straining there, so I bet it's still turning the, the reel, even though the camera makes it look as if it's going a lot slower than it is. Um, and also, fast forward, play, which should stop, because obviously the uh, reed is being act activated by the, the magnets. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's also quite useful. And... Um, Project. And that's the other thing I am finding is that uh, yeah, <laughs> for some reason when it's upside down, the um, the actual um, mechanism that senses that you've pushed the tape in and actuates this um, micro switch here, uh, it gets jammed when it's uh, upside down. So I don't remember that ever being an issue, but yeah, just in case you're wondering. So the other thing as well I said I'd do, but didn't, was uh, check back tension. And um, I've got the tape. And um, again, the manual isn't very clear on what the back tension should be. In fact, it doesn't even show using the cassette. It actually shows using um, uh, uh, open reel and uh, uh, gauge. Um, so, yeah, quite different. But helpfully, um, somebody has actually written on the on the case for the um, for it that a C7 should have um, a back tension of 35 to 45. And I was going to sort of set it to about 30. So, yeah, if we aim for about 35. And take up should be sixty to one hundred and ten. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's let's give it a go. I'm intrigued to see, mainly because this machine works really well. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a bit tricky. There we go. And let's press play, and we should. Well, it's actually high. So we're actually running at 50. So I need to drop that back. Um, take up is about 110. We're just below, so that's good. So we've got excessive uh, back tension. So yeah, we need to just back that off a bit. Okay, so I've, I have backed it off. Um, and the spring's at the lowest position and um i've actually had to adjust the the screw adjustment as well and it's just above 40. um even with all of that that's the lowest i've been able to get it so um yeah that was actually quite tricky to do but we got there so i'm happy that um 
it is about right anyway so yeah that's properly adjusted and I'll, I'll just show you which adjustments I actually made so adjust the back tension by moving the spring on the back of the arm here it's still a bit of muck I've missed like I say once you start cleaning you keep spotting bits that you've missed um, that is as slack as it goes so um, what I've had to do is slacken off these two screws and just move this um, back this way, so this way a little bit, just slacken it off and then tighten these back up. Just the slightest bit of adjustment and it's, it's dropped it enough. Um, but to be fair, it wouldn't let me adjust it any further back. I don't, don't know whether I'm missing something there when I'm doing that, but uh, maybe let me know in the comments. But that was enough. Um, I'm happy that it's it's sort of lower than the very top end so it's about 40. Um, so uh, the other thing I have is this. Now this is um, Fast Forward Rewind Check Cassettes. You see there's no tape there but what this will tell me is um, how much torque there is um, in Fast Forward and Rewind and I should be getting 12 on Fast Forward on this one so right the way to the end if not a bit further beyond and then on rewind I should be getting up to eight now um in c6s you can't actually see the eights but there is a mark uh, there on the spool and when this is up to around eight that mark is somewhere around here so this isn't terribly critical but it gives a good indication on the, the health of the the deck so let's just give that a try so first of all fast forward this is always good fun um so just about to see the 12 mark there and you can see that's fine it's obviously slipping a bit um but that's that's fine um i'd expect that because it's putting a lot of pressure against this uh now rewind Yeah, and it's a tiny bit low, but that's not bad at all. Um, it's probably about six or seven, whereas eight is preferable, but I'm happy with that. Um, ideally, um, if I could get my hands on one, I'd like to fit a C6 Rewind kit. There was a modification kit that improved the performance of Rewind. And um, I will say even with repairing um, or put, putting that spring back on and just checking everything through. Um, it's still a little bit on the slow side on rewind, especially when it gets to the beginning of the, the cassette on a rewind session. Uh, you can see it's it's labouring a bit. So, yeah, not ideal, but, um, you know, it's an old machine and uh, you have to make some allowances for the fact that you just can't get the spares anymore. But otherwise, it is an absolutely fantastic machine. So, and um, even with those slight shortcomings, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't give years of life. Um, so, yeah, really pleased with that. And just a quick reminder of how good this machine's picture is. I mean, it really is brilliant. I'm so pleased with it. Even with this very worn cassette, it just really makes um, makes the best out of it, to be honest. So, incredibly pleased with this C6. There we go, all up to date. And uh, yeah, really pleased with this machine. It's working well. Uh, I will give it an alignment as well and remove that battery. It's it's not really charging at all, to be fair. Uh, so yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And thank you to everyone who has already uh, subscribed. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And uh, See you in a future video. Bye for now.